Kelly Ciccone, um, and I'm working at Cornell University as part of uh, Quality Milk Production Services, and I work under uh, Dr. Ninja Shugan. Um, and what I've been working on for the past three, four years is a project that we're calling Project Cal. And uh, what it is is uh, the impact of organic uh, management on uh, dairy animal health and well-being. Uh, and we've actually just finished the field aspect of the
test for Yonis, and it didn't really turn out that great. So um, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> okay. So the questions for this talk that, um, what do we really want to know? First, um, is milk quality any different between organic and conventional farms from the farms that we see? Second, is, as far as the semantic cell count goes, what differences do we see between organic and conventional? Then from there, um, what management strategies or risk factors are associated with a higher or lower semantic cell count on organic and conventional farms? And then within the organic community specifically, um, what factors are associated with this change in semantic cell count? I'm also going to um, tack on a little bit at the end, uh, specific to New York farms, since we are in New York State. So I added this. This is in the proceeding, and it's really not that interesting, but I wanted to just throw it up there. Um, what you're seeing here, there's no difference in any of these between the organic and conventional farms. No significant difference. Um, Basically, the biggest difference that we saw was how we had organic farms had a, on average four uh, CFUs per mill, whereas conventional farms had 10 CFUs per mill. Now, that is considered significant, but biologically it's not significant. It's still under the cut for milk quality. So uh, it's really not that interesting, to be honest. Um, and as far as foodborne bacteria, which is kind of a uh, an interest of mine. Um, they, all of our farms were well below what we expected. Previous research has found that the percentage <coughs> is much higher. So we really didn't find much of anything. And then again, mycoplasma and BBD, we found almost none. Um, I think we had two or three farms total that had uh, mycoplasma and a couple that had BBD. Nothing super over the top. <laughs> So this is what um, I'm going to concentrate on for my first uh, publication, is the semantic cell count. Um, so there's no real significant difference between organic and conventional farms as far as um, the semantic cell count. This is just a distribution of the, um, the logs of the semantic cell count so that we can normalize the data. Um, this is just to show um, just the distribution. And again, um, these are the three locations. Now we did find that there is a significant difference in the semantic cell count by location. Um, as you can see, Oregon, our significant semantic cell count is significantly lower than um, Wisconsin and New York. However, Wisconsin and New York were not significantly different. There. We had a lot of similarities between Wisconsin and New York. Oregon really needs to be the outlier for that reason. So when we looked at the model um, semantic cell count across all the herd samples, so ended up being 290 because there was two bulk tanks that didn't get tested um, at the requested farm. Um, we found that, the, again, the location was significant. Also, the use of gloves while milking seemed to be associated with a lower semantic cell count, which is real. <laughs> um, management, organic versus conventional, did not seem to be a factor um, in the change in semantic cell count. Um, however, uh, so the number of, these were the two, I guess, most interesting ones that we found. Um, the total number of years in area seems to be uh, associated with a higher semantic cell count. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing here, are, this is our average semantic cell count. This is New York, Wisconsin, and Wisconsin. And one, two, and three are associated, are shown here. So one is, they've been farming total, not just organically, total for less than 10 years. Um, medium is 11 to 20 years, and then anything over that is considered a high amount of time to be dairy. And what we found is that there is a significant increase in semantic cell count as the number of years you've been dairy goes up. We also found, and this is, we were kind of questioning this a lot, um, it, but it kept coming up in the models over and over again, that the um, percent of heifers on the farm that are full bred is associated with a higher semantic cell count. Um, and we were trying to kind of wrap our head around this because we're saying, what does the way that you know the animals are bred have to do with the semantic cell count? And what we've kind of, our theory right now is that it has to do with management, um, the intensity of management. Um, you know, maybe if, if there's a 
high, you know, 100% are bull bred, maybe there's not as much intensive management going on. So maybe they're not paying attention to the self count as much. I don't, I don't know. Um, it's still a work in progress. So then across all the organic herds, we found that location was not a factor. Um, so this is just a subset of the last presentation. Um, we found that use of rotational grazing, uh, use of a quarantine unit, and use of antibiotic salt and transition cow diets were all associated with a lower somatic cell count. Um, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, somatic cell count, however, tended to be higher on organic farms in the fall and the summer than in the spring and winter. Uh, and again, the same uh, conclusion, 50% of heifers in the farm that are full, full bred. We have higher somatic cell count as the uh, percentage of heifers that are full bred goes up. So that, this is just the last little piece. Um, I just wanted to talk about specifically about New York. Um, this is a, uh, all the farms that I visited, 97 total. And in our, um, in New York State, we see a lower, significantly lower somatic cell count uh, with conventional farms. Um, the grazing system is associated with a higher somatic cell count. Again, the um, use of uh, the anionic salt and the transition cow diets associated with a lower somatic cell count. Um, and again, we see the percent of heifers on the farm that are bull bred. Um, they can have higher somatic cell count if there's a higher percentage of bull bred heifers. And then um, this last slide right here is showing the uh, culturing of clinical mastitis. We asked the farmers um, what the frequency of them culturing clinical cases of clinical mastitis was. And the options were all cases, no cases, really severe cases, or some, occasionally. What we found is that if they're not consistent, if they're not consistently um, culturing all cases, or not consistently culture and none, um, they tend to have a higher somatic cell count. And this is actually significant. If they're just doing a few here and there, they tend to have a higher somatic cell count. So New York organic farms, we tend to, we, we're seeing a higher number of, um, we're seeing a higher somatic cell count in farms that have higher numbers of animals with three teeth. Um, this is basically the same thing, percentage of uh, cows on the farm instead of heifers. Um, that are bull bred, we see a higher somatic cell count. Um, we see a lower somatic cell count when uh, the farm consistently tests their water for bacteria. And then again, use of anionic salt and transition cow diets is associated with a low somatic cell count. So these are our basic take home messages. I just mentioned most of them. I won't waste your time going through all of them again. Um, but, uh, Um, so other research that's going on in Wisconsin, like I mentioned, this is a huge, huge project, and we have lots and lots of data to work with. Um, so in Wisconsin right now, they're working on the uh, use and the role of veterinarians on organic and um, conventional dairy farms, which is actually a really interesting paper. Um, I think they're doing the final workup of it right now. Uh, I think it's already submitted. Um, and what they're finding, again, um, which kind of supports what we're, the conclusions we're coming to is that really depends on the intensity of the management, um, and not necessarily the organic versus conventional. Um, in New York, the other research that I'm doing um, on top of this somatic cell count analysis, I'm looking for the presence of uh, methicillin-resistant staph aureus in the bulk tank milk right now. Um, and that's based on some new research that was recently found, so I kind of had to revamp everything. <laughs> um, and then I'm also going to be looking at overall bulk tank uh, microbial communities, and also uh, um, I just want to thank USDA for paying for everything. Um, University of Wisconsin Madison, Oregon State, uh, Lisa and Linda, and all of my organic and conventional farmers. They are amazing. And uh, no for for allowing us to continue to present our research. Questions? So you took bulk tank samples, not looking at um, samples that were run through a DHII composite of individual cow samples. Because one of the issues that we ran into when we did a similar study was that a lot of organic dairy farmers use quarter milkers and actually do a CMT test to figure out which quarters tend to have higher somatic cell count. Mm -hmm. Just use a quarter milk to isolate that milk and not put it in the bulk tank. So. Yeah, so um, quarter milking, are, are you from here? No, I'm from Maine. 
quarter milking in New York, um, you have to have a separate vacuuming system, I think. Is that right? That, that may be right, but that doesn't mean it's not. Well, done. you're you're right, you're right. But I did. I also one of the questions that we that we asked was, do you use a quarantine milker? That was one of the questions, um, and a lot of the farms did. Um, however, we also did ask them how many uh, animals were kept out of tank or partially kept out of the tank. So that was included in the model, um, and it did wasn't found to be significant. Yeah, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my understanding of the set of conventional farms selected for this study uh, were predominantly grazing operations and, or not CAFOs, not confinement dairies. They were any conventional farm. Um, they weren't predominantly thought, one or the other. Okay, I, I thought you said they were selected to be approximate size of the organic. Yeah, well, cohorts. I mean, they were, so if I had three farms um, in Tonkin County, for example, that were about 100 cows, what I'd do is I would send out um, letters to a bunch of farmers in Tompkins County that were uh, conventional. And they would send me back information about the size of their herd. So if they had about 100 cows that were with, within 50 miles of these three uh, uh -huh. farms. But how many of them used grazing uh, in, uh, in the conventional? Uh, I'm not sure as far as Wisconsin and Oregon. Yeah. In New York, I visited um, 25. I want to say there was probably five or six. There was a few that were like intensive grazers that were conventional, and I kind of asked them, why aren't you organic? <laughs> you know? uh, and, um, but yeah, uh, well, my, my understanding of the Wisconsin set anyway is it wasn't really representative of the conventional dairy industry in Wisconsin, that it really was more similar to organic, just like you're saying. But then the, a question I have is, uh, did you look at the average lactations per cow on the different Systems. Yes, we did. Um, and uh, organic farms tend to have older cows, uh, or more. Get more lactation per lactations. cow, so longer. But we didn't. Like, we didn't find that to be a significant factor as far as the cell count goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Wisconsin actually broke their analysis up to uh, represent if organic, they have conventional, and then they have conventional grazers. So they're compared to three groups, whereas I only I only compared to two. Um, Questions? 